Hey guys, welcome to the Dream Lounge Podcast, the third edition or something like that. Today is another question from a reader. Uh, it's pretty simple, it's nothing too uh, complex. And it's going to relate in the end to uh, bodyweight exercises and performing a body by science protocol, type protocol even, using just body weight and simple equipment. So the guy's name is Daniel, he emailed in. Message is as follows. Hey Anthony, I recently finished reading Body by Science. In theory, it was very informative and incredibly interesting. But the problem is that in practice, I have no access to any good machine. I'm from Israel, no Nautilus or medics equipment in this country. Uh, taking a break from the quote here, I actually don't know if it's true. I'd bet there's at least some in Israel. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but it's definitely worth looking into. Um, yeah. I mean, anywhere in the world, there's probably a few Nautilus machines hanging around. At least in uh, the developed world. I don't think that would be true in third world countries. Moving on. Body by Science offers a program done with barbells, but said program consists of five exercises, which require a strict form, which is hard to keep while on heavy fatigue, and are somewhat... I'm just reading this verbatim, by the way, guys. Uh, I don't think English is his first language, maybe? Hard to keep while on heavy fatigue and are somewhat dangerous. Overhead press, squats, deadlifts, barbell row, and bench press. All of these are either dangerous or require a strict art form to perform. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, sorry if that was a little too loud there, guys. I totally agree some of these are dangerous. Um, and even if they require a strict form like you're saying, you probably shouldn't be doing them. I've gone on and on about that with uh, barbell squats in particular, above all, really. Yeah, you should not. You should not be doing this. It's just a waste. Of, it's a waste of your time. It's completely unnecessary. There is no good reason on earth to do a barbell squat, other than maybe if it's your sport. So you're doing barbell squats to do barbell squats in and of themselves as an end in themselves, because that's your sport. That's that's what you're practicing to do. So you should do them probably. Other than you know, if that is your sport, well, you should fucking quit. I thought I said. But yeah. Uh, moving on, just a little rant there for you guys to what the the end of the quote before I'll get into kind of answering his questions. He says, "My question is then, what movement should I do to get my full body working in every exercise without having too big of a volume, and without requiring to compromise safety or needing strict and hard to keep form?" So, I guess the the contradiction you're thinking, Daniel, or the flaw is that. And I can see how someone would get this. They read Body by Science, they're like, oh, the Big Five is going to change my life. And then they're like, I don't have access to these magical machines. Not to knock medics and Nautilus equipment, which is usually really good. I use Nautilus equipment to this day. Um, but yeah, someone might get this impression that if you don't you know, have those machines, you're just stuck using just dumbbells and barbells. And then the barbells in particular prevent, not prevent, present. Uh, hopefully obvious problems, particularly the barbell squat and the deadlift even, as well as maybe the overhead press. Uh, that's definitely a an exercise. Bill DeSimone has talked quite a bit about it at the tournament convention and elsewhere that uh, might not be appropriate to do with free weights. And then even with machines, you know, the question is still whether or not you want to do it. I don't do them. So, my my biggest answer uh, as far as a generator to a, a deeper answer is that you don't need any of that stuff to do a body by science uh, big five um, or even anything resembling that you know a high intensity training type protocol or a method of training we'll say you don't you absolutely don't I figured this out for myself pretty quick when I was I went to Australia this year and I knew I was going to be away from home from my precious ArxFit Omni <laughs> for god six weeks just about maybe even longer it was a long time i was gone i went to california australia for the 21 convention uh in indonesia fiji lots of places and so i didn't just stop working out i just figured out pretty quickly uh what i wanted what i needed to do and then what i wanted to do based off kind of what i was able to do while traveling so long story short is you can do you know really intense exercise whether it's single joint or multiple joint exercises while traveling or if you live in a place where you don't have access to anything 
uh, any kind of common tools like selectorized machines or free weights, barbells and dumbbells. Body weight, I mean, I would challenge those of you listening to this very podcast just to do 10 quote unquote super slow body weight push ups in, in really good form. Uh, just do your best. I mean, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Just try getting 10. If you weigh anything, it's really hard because each push up takes close to 20 seconds. So by the time you're done, I mean, you are, if you do even 10, you're fucking roasted at the end. And it is every bit as hard as a Nautilus chest press or a Medic's chest press and so on. Now, over time, that can present a little bit of problems, but. Whoa. No, we're good. Thought I had a button here. Uh, over time, as Bill Simone discusses in Congruent Exercise, that can present problems as far as progression. Uh, a bodyweight push up is kind of a bodyweight push up, it's based off your body weight. So once you get stronger, it's hard to make them harder without just doing more or do, doing them even more slowly. Or if you're particularly courageous, doing them really fast, The uh, which I don't recommend at all, the ballistic push-ups, all that bullshit, the clap ones and the single arm. I've seen God on YouTube, this one guy did like uneven ones. He he on, he purposefully rearranged his, his arms to be like different levels on the ground. Just seems like a really bad idea. But, you know, all that aside, I mean, bodyweight push-ups alone should keep a trainee that's new to body by science busy for a long, long time. Um, like, six months, long, long time. Easy. And why is that? Again, ten is is probably a number of push-ups. I know how ridiculous that sounds. That a lot of people can't get if they're taking ten seconds or even close to it to go up and down during a bodyweight push-up. Um... So yeah, I mean, even getting to 10 for some people is going to be a difficult thing in and of itself. And then what? Then they can do 11, 12, 13. They can use... I guess if you finagled it too, you could use like a resistance band to uh, make it harder. Would that be a little bit awkward? Um, But yeah, I don't need to go on and on about bodyweight push-ups. That's just one example of something you can do that is really simple. And obviously you don't need anything but the ground and yourself. And the will and the intelligence to go really slow while you're doing them. Um, that takes care of a good chunk of your arms, your chest, your shoulders, and even your abs are, are brought into a push-up like that. Then there's other things you can do to do body weight. And there's people that have written about this better than I have. Uh, I've written very little about it, probably. But just to name a few, uh, conditioning research, Chris Highcock. Hi- I always screw up his name. Um, he wrote a book called Hill Fit that's for like hikers and backpackers and, and whatnot. But really, and I think uh, the mask guy, Michael Allen Smith, has written this too, almost verbatim. Like the book's not just for people who go backpacking and hiking. I bought the book. Not that I buy it. I had it just sitting around. I read the book more accurately, uh, Hill Fit by Chris. And it's great. It's a really good it's useful, I guess what I'm saying is, for people who want to travel, which is which was my case. But anyone who really, like this guy Daniel, who don't have uh, good equipment, who don't have any equipment, maybe in this case, laying around. And so the book teaches you how to work, like, basically your entire body in a body by science fashion without, like, anything. Anything more complicated than, like, a backpack or a towel. So it, it's great. And when you, when you read Hill Fit, and especially if you've read Body by Science before Hill Fit, you'll, I think, pretty quickly realize, if you're creative at all, how to do even more things that are maybe not even in the book. For example, you can do, I don't know if this is in Hillfoot or not, I'm not sure. You can do like tricep extensions, uh, a static tricep extension that's really hard, just using a desk. And then I've seen Chris post as well, I haven't done this personally, but a tricep extension, you can even, that's not, you're not, you don't have any kind of feedback when you're doing that, but it's still really hard. Just do it for like a minute and a half, just like a body by science uh, time under load. You could use weight scales from like a bathroom, and you can actually get a, like a crude, you know, force readout as you're doing it to make sure you're not cheating. But you know, you can also just be honest with yourself when you're doing it and make sure you're working hard. That's the way to do that, no matter where you're in the world, no matter where, uh, what kind of equipment you have. And it just goes on and on. You can do body weight squats that just do them really, really slow. Uh, you can do heel raises with body weight only. You can do a bicep curl, static. Uh, that's very hard. This is what I did when I was traveling. 
using just a resistance band for like five, ten dollars or whatever on Amazon. Um, so yeah, if you're creative and you have a basic understanding of how your body works and the movements that you want to do, it's not that hard to do a really intense, really effective, really safe workout with body weight and maybe something as simple as resistance bands. So again, uh, Chris Hycock from Conditioning Research has written Hill Fit, which is fantastic for learning how to do this, especially if you have Body by Science as a background going into reading that book, which is really well written, really to the point, uh, really concise. Highly recommend it. I'll see if I can find a link. I, I want to say that Michael Allen Smith, the mask guy from Seattle or something, um, he's written a little bit about body weight exercises as well. And then Drew Bay, I'm pretty sure, has also has quite a bit on bodyweight exercises. But, I mean, a lot of it comes down to something I want to say I saw Bill Simone say in an interview with Chris, Chris on Conditioning Research a while back. That Bill's book was not so much about uh, movements as it was like biomechanics and muscles. So rather than training movements, it's about training muscles. And if you can get an understanding of how to do that, or at least how your muscles work, and what's safe and what's not safe, and what you should be doing and what you should not be doing, like you know, going to an extreme in a range of motion or moving fast. Uh, it's really not that difficult. I mean, I didn't have a lot of experience with bodyweight exercises before I traveled for the, uh, the Australia 21 convention this past November and December. But um, you know, the minute I got out there, I figured out just with my body and the couple of resistance bands I brought that it was really easy to do a lot of different things. You know, something else I figured out that was actually really good was uh, shrugs with resistance bands tied around my feet. Uh, that was really good, too. So, yeah, I mean, that's my answer, man. You know, what kind of, you ask, what kind of movements, Daniel asks, what kind of movements should I do to get my full body working and every exercise? I mean, it, it's, there isn't a whole lot to, to be doing. It, it's more so understanding your body and understanding how to do those movements that work the muscles that you want to work. So a pull down, a row, uh, I wouldn't say an overhead press necessarily, but your shoulders, your chest, your arms, uh, your upper back, your legs, heel raises, just like Bill Simone shows them in his YouTube videos. Uh, you know, I do, I have an Omni, you know, the Arxfoot Omni you guys see me use in video and stuff. Dude, I don't, it does heel raises just great um, for added resistance, but I don't ever use it. I've never used it for heel raises. I don't care to use it. I don't even use... I have access... I go to a gym near my house sometimes for some other exercises uh, they have good machines for. And, uh, man, I, they have you know a whole set of dumbbells all the way to 100 and, 100 and something pounds. I don't ever use those for heel raises, and I can. I've used up to like 80 pounds, a single uh, dumbbell for heel raise. It's totally unnecessary, uh, as far as for me anyway. I, do, I weigh 180 pounds. I'm 5'9". And I can do single leg heel raises congruently, just like Bill shows them. It's very obvious, too, when you do a congruent heel raise. It feels like you're doing, you feel the effort very immediately, very obviously. But yeah, I don't ever use, I don't even need. And I have, my calves are, I think, uh, in great shape relative to my body. And I don't ever need to use extra weight. One leg is fine, and it's totally fine, it's totally safe, and it's, it's all you need is your body weight. At least if you're someone like me, and a lot of other people are probably the same. People who are skinnier, their calves aren't going to be as big, so even if you're a little bit smaller, it's not going to be a big deal. So yeah, learn how to use your body, Daniel. It's uh, it's not as uh, intimidating as, might, intimidating as it might seem at first. Uh, and you know, I can appreciate how seeing all the, uh, the exercises in Body by Science on like ten thousand dollar selectorized machines with like super slow retrofits and ultra lubrication guide systems all this fucking shit actually i don't know if that's in body by science or not but they definitely show all these machines that uh maybe they're not common where you live or maybe they're really hard to find and yeah dude you don't need them you need to learn how to work your body uh there's a million ways to do that and drew bay michael allen smith and chris Hycock have plenty of information on how to do that in a safe and appropriate manner, and an easy to understand way, and an easy to understand fashion too. It's not hard to learn these things. You probably have a lot more difficulty in learning how to, uh, or at least not difficulty in learning, but in appreciating the importance of uh, not grimacing, of continuing to breathe throughout an exercise rather than holding your breath, and your pain tolerance going up over time as you become more used to intense muscular contractions. 
excuse me, high effort, muscular contractions. So yeah, that's it. Uh, bodyweight training is is fantastic. Um, there's great places to learn about them beyond my blog because I haven't written too much about them. And yeah, I guess people might be wondering now, like, uh, are bodyweight exercises as effective as using all these fantastic machines and tools and such? Or even bodyweight plus like a resistance band or something similar, simple like that? I would say, yeah. I would say, uh, contrary to, to popular opinion, um, at least for the early stages in someone's training, if not throughout for many years, it's fantastic. Between, again, resistance bands, body weight, uh, time static contractions, not using anything, um, you can get really good results. You can get really good metabolic conditioning even, I think. Uh, if you go through it kind of fast, uh, your workout. And yeah, it's not like you're not missing out on like these, this extra 10 pounds of muscle by not using a Medex machine. Believe me, it's not there. Um, you might be missing out on like a tiny bit, but I mean, if you're gaining even a pound of real muscle per year over your entire body, you're training after the first six months to uh, zero to 12 months after you kind of get through that initial stage, uh, going from an untrained person. If you're gaining a year, a year, a pound of muscle per year throughout the rest of your life, you're doing fantastic. You're doing as good as you can probably do. And I think body weight, if if it's intelligently intelligently programmed and the person understands how to do it, then yeah, it's fine. And of course, the great thing is, you know, you can do this from anywhere in the world and you don't need, even if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you live in who knows where, Timbuktu, some shit, <laughs> Zamunda, um, which is not a real country. It's from coming to America. Yeah, you can learn it, and you can do it, and you can have great results, and you can be as healthy as you're probably ever going to be, relative to strength training. So that's it, guys. That's my ranting spiel on bodyweight exercises. I'll put links uh, underneath the video in the description to Drew Bay's blog, Michael Allen Smith, and Chris Hycock to his book. Um, might be an affiliate link in there, so I might make money off it. I might not. It depends if I actually take the time to go find that link. But in all cases, you should buy Chris's book and you should read the links I provide in the video. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I will catch you later.